big data interactive visualization. And here's um, Amar Dahiani, and uh, I was supervised and reviewed by Razash Sainuddin, uh, and is in the uh, Department of Computer Science, of course. So it is a bit of an abroad and big uh, topic to talk about the uh, big data visualization and visualization itself, because it, it, it's, uh, it has different levels, and I try to, to, to bring it as kind of a life story. So I will start with the introduction about visualization, then big data, why interactive visualization, then we'll go to the visualization tools, different use, different type, who should use them, and different scenarios. We will go uh, then to data via interactive visualization and see like some cases of, of like different data type to get like a, the use of interactive visualization and how could that help. And then we have a use case that was built during this project to show what we have talked uh, about before. So start with data visualization, what cannot be touched, smelled, or tested can be represented visually. So why data visualization? It just makes things easy to understand. Human brain, it's difficult for them to understand multiple things unless they are visualized. So it makes something complex appear simple, even for professional people, for those who just have been in the field or knows a lot about data, when things in complex, sometimes data is machinery data. So visualization makes a lot of sense because it, it, it helps them to clean the data, identify trends through time, and spot local patterns and present results, uh, results for people, for analytics, for uh, business people to, to make decisions and to go forward in, in, in big companies and industries. So the, we have, uh, we're going to talk about interactive visualization and big data now, and that will just see why we're going to talk about interactive visualization, not just visualization or static visualization. One picture is worth a thousand words. And we have big data. Data is being now daily recorded from every click to, uh, on the web to personal records. Petabytes of data has been like, it's been generated maybe every hour or even less. And, but uh, the, the value of this data is huge. It's, it's, it plays an important role in, in making decisions, optimization, doing a lot and can reveal many insights. But there are like huge channels, like human brains, even professional people, as we say, can't really process those data. Some data like they are from different data types and they are huge that can be can't be seen or look at it or processed without being visualized but big data would require huge static many static views because there will be many attributes to the data many variables how will we be able to show all of them so we would need just tens hundreds of thousands of static views to show them and also we have another problem that we have a limited number of pixels in display so some visualization will not be possible over time because it is huge or it will be just getting uh, zoomed in or like in a scaled in or out that will make it unusable. So a solution, maybe key, uh, keyhole problem, which is like to show the full details of the data, but in a small number of items and those and then you would just keep scrolling. So you could see just few items with the whole features, whole details, but just keep scrolling, which will make the user loses the context. And actually it's not applicable to many things. It's just maybe text files, tables that you would be able to scroll through, through them. So maybe in checks of visualization, overview first, zoom and filter, then details on demand. So this is the whole idea. It gives the user the ability and empower the users to use the visualization, to make sense of it, to interact with it, to, to, to make things easier, to go to details, to filter stuff. But interactive visualization have two strategies. One is navigation strategy. The other one is visual interaction strategy. The navigation strategy, it is 
empowering or enabling the user to go and translate and has the freedom to go between different levels of details. Go see the whole overview, but then go in and zoom in to see details of the details and then back. It's give them the ability to, to, to see the whole thing at once, but then zoom in to see some patterns or see some future of interest. And there are like three strategies here, zoom and ban, overview and detail, focus and context, and we will go through them. But from the other side, visual interaction strategy, it is the more, it is the strategy that they support more scalability because it helps and enables users to filter data in a way that uh, they can just, if the data have like multiple subsets, they can just go through that and just see only subsets they can deal with the, the, the huge number of data or like the complexity or if it is just ugly and then you try to clean it out and see some patterns there start with navigation strategies start with zoom and ban we say overview first then zoom into the data to access details of interest maps and examples you open the map then it gives you some uh, a view you go in deeper and then you go out to see the whole things or even out and out and you will keep scrolling and it is helpful because it's used the screen efficient uh, efficiently and but yeah it would still have you know there's only a penalty there because uh, the user might get like uh, disoriented because as they go zoom in so much then they they start to lose it so they need to go back but it is kind of a trade-off. We have overview on detail. That will just let the users see the whole overview, but then give them the ability to see a detailed view. So they don't lose the, 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 the context of the whole overview, but also this is maybe has a negative that in small screens that it, it will be impossible to, to have both in some cases. So the, the, the detailed view, maybe in maps, it will take the whole screen. And we have focus and context. It focus region to differentiate, differentiate the region itself from the whole things. And, and in the picture, we have a huge complex visualization that visualizes the, the jazz history between artists and the connection between them. But how cool that, how complex, but then with one interaction that you would be able to, to spot and differentiate that region and see the connection. By the way, the 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 the, the pop up that uh, that in black, it is it is not uh, focus and context, but they are they are using multiple strategies. One is focus and context, and uh, the other one is uh, detail and overview. So you can combine multiple strategies at the same time. And one one example you can see in the doc of of application icons in 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 the Mac. If Mac users know, they would go and they can move through them and they would pop up a bit so they can differentiate themselves. Now we will talk about visual interaction strategies. We would go with selection and linking. We have them both together because they really actually work a lot together. Selection is to select the subset of the data. You can just highlight it from the from the visualization. And in this case you would have multiple visualization for example they have they are the same data but with different you are visualizing different attributes of the data and maybe for one of them you would find like a pattern or something and you want to see this area of the data how does it looks or how does it perform in other visualizations so you just uh, highlight it and then you go to the linking, which is it relates information of the same data set you highlighted in one visualization to other visualization. So you can see and you can make relations and you can come with a really great insights. That's why selecting and linking usually called linked, linked brushing because they usually work together. And we go with a filtering. Filtering is a bit there's a bit of confusion between filtering and selecting because they, they look similar. They are like to, to some degree, but the things with filtering is, is it does have uh, another like a, a screen or another a separate interface, as you say, that you can 
identify the identify or select the filters that you want to use and sometimes even the filters you would select them be before the, the visualization started and this is this helps in like when you are visualizing it like huge data sets so you don't want to load the whole data so you start doing the filters and then confirm so the visualization start to appear that will save you some computational cost and stuff and filter helps a lot when you have big data with many features and you start to like want to see just only part of it some features you want to compare stuff that of interest for you rearranging and mapping it is uh, customized the visual uh, visual mapping like which you build a new insight and it's actually this mainly used in spatial layout you know when you have this visualization they use it to create circuits in electrical fields in computers then you have inputs outputs so we'd be able the user to to change the input and to see how the outputs works which is like it is great and it's useful because it kind of simulates the, the, the real world as we have the strategy we have the tools they are the, the things that helps to build things visualization tool they you have those big data uh different strategies you want to uh, visualize them you need the tools for that some like tools that they are powerful to to to, to do that and also tools that they can be used in different cases some people for, for different skill sets of uh that people have some people they, they are like coming from like programming skills people they don't so there would be like two types mainly drag and drop type and program based tools you have like many of them dozens if not hundreds of tools are avail available there some of to some tools just some of them here we, we would go through them we have tableau d3 vega google chart we have power bi as well and others it starts with tableau it is a drag and drop uh, type user friendly bring nice interfaces and it is really uh, leading in the world of data analysis and business intelligence because it's it allowed the integration of, with advanced databases and accept many data uh, data format to to uh, to to connect with the, with the with the platform it meets the, the need of a variety of users because uh, people can use it without any coding or programming skills but one thing is it's very expensive to at scales when you have huge uh, company with different departments. It's it's good. It like start to get very expensive. And as it comes with its like uh, visualization and they have multiple of them, but still you, you, you need to stick with them. You can't go out of the box. And Tableau, Power BI, almost the same thing, but with different like different companies. You have D3 is the free open source tools. One of the most powerful there, uh, out there it is a Java, JavaScript play, uh, library. It requires a high level of coding skill because it is a low level uh, library that actually give the user the freedom to, to build any almost anything because you can control the details of the details. There's a big community behind it and it is it is really powerful and you can do almost anything with it other tools there are many many of them many of them they are in built in javascript and they why is that because javascript is an interface language is the only one that work with the front end so visualization normally used to to bring something to the user so many of the other tools they built on top of d3 because how powerful is d3 but they build it on top of D3 to make it more high, high, uh, high level language, less lines of code, but with less customization and of course less powerful than D3, but uh, depend some cases in many cases. And this is an important topic because in many cases, users doesn't need to go with D3 or whatever. It is just if, if, if a high level easy to use library can do the job it is, it is easy because you the user need to think about the, the time or the, the skills need to implement it and even the time and the ex expenses needed to maintain the tool 
I'm just uh, go to now uh, understanding that have you interactive visualization brings some uh, some like uh, examples like network data because network data is the way to represent interaction among entities in biological other social information system because you would be able to discover structure and 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 discover patterns in a network and reveal like. A useful insight, well, but in, in in big and huge data sets, it, it will be really complex to see event and 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 to figure it out. In this picture, like in the right side, we have like a, a network of body, a network of pattern in medical compound data sets. And if you see the first picture, is it's really tough. Even how beautiful, colorful, but then to make any sense of it. But just adding one future just by highlighting or hovering over one of the uh, nodes it's, it's 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 make a lot of sense because now it's, you can see connection and relation between different uh, nodes in different levels and this is the, the, the powerful how 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 can how can interactivity be used and this is just one way and we have time series data i mean i think it's obvious like line graph is the most common way to represent data time because it is really helps to, to observe the, the, the change over time. When you have a data, few attributes, few variables, that's good, that's cool, because you would be able to just uh, draw a few lines. But then if you have big data with many variables, and you, you, you need to visualize them over time, how, how that is possible. So it will be just overwhelming to see even, or to figure out what's what's going on. But you can apply multiple strategy. This one is using the, 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 the focus and context. And when you just highlight one of them, it, it just uh, keep it and leave the other like uh, almost, uh, you can see them, but give it more of contrast. And you can have a better idea. You can, there are also other uses, other ways, other strategy can be applied. Let's talk about our case here as we go through the, uh, the, the introduction and, and then the tools, the strategies. We have a case that was built uh, during this project, the BLM use case, an overview on uh, May 25th in 2020. George Floyd, a uh, 46-year-old African-American, was arrested and treated harshly. It led to his death, uh, that unfortunate accident uh, incident. Uh, what happened after that? There's a movement called the Black Lives Matter was reinitiated, and this movement has been there since 2014, from an incident before that. And uh, the movement was also trending in Twitter. When Twitter is also a social media like network tool, allows users to post comments, and they call actually tweets, and they have limited to 140 character many people from different background politicals uh and, and, and politics or different uh industry they go and and then they, they they talk you would be able to for example one of the main thing is hashtag people include hashtags and then with the word to to bring like more of attention to to that subject if that goes and many people uh, uh, use the same hashtags that goes viral the data sets that was collected, the original data set was collected was 41.8 million tweets from 10 million, users, 10 million users between 2014 and 2020. Only tweets that was after the death of George Floyd until June 2020, which is 1 million 600, more than 1 million 600 thousand tweets. The one that we used, but actually still we didn't use the whole things. Those are the hashtags that were, were, were uh, uh, mainly appeared on, on those tweets. You would see that the one in Blacks all goes to the group of Black Lives Matter and the two in Red goes to the All Lives Matter. So data processing, this is, was a challenge because we wouldn't be able to process all that data. We, we would need like a tool to be implemented in the cloud and we don't have the resources. So what we did, we get to the top 200 tweets in terms of the retweets. And if we go and get only the two, two sub 100 uh, tweets, it will be impossible because those tweets uh, will be mainly from Black Lives Matter. So we get the first 100 tweets from, uh, 
that contain Black Lives Matter and then take them away with other 100 tweets from uh, All Lives Matter and then also create other, a, a third community called Mixed Community. We don't know what it is. We need to analyze it later in the visualization. And those are the community that they contain both the tweet that contain both hashtags uh, the, that refer to black and all live matters and uh, the, the limitation that as we, we see in the report that it is not intended for, like for like to cover the whole things not for the production not to give any opinion uh, about the incidents and it is just few data and the analysis goes only for the data we have Visualization we use D3 and React JS. React is a front end JavaScript library used for building user interfaces with, with, with both D3 and React JS, as it is tricky to use both of them because it's difficult and how both have different complexity in, in, do, uh, in dominating the dome of the interface. But if you, they use correctly and they, they, they can give an unlimited options. So we go to the demo. So now we have, uh, those are like, uh, this is the visualization and we can see here that those, the notes and uh, which is like represent the tweets. We have three colors, uh, like the mainly blue, uh, green and red, which is goes for black or lives and uh, and mixed communities. And the, 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 the one is like in, in a darker colors that they are the, they are the users that they have a verified account. So one, one of the functionality we have here is the zoom in and out. You can just uh, go deeply and check the things, but then you can go back and see the whole things. And this is from the zoom and ban. And from the overview and details, you can just hover on one of the, of, of the, of the like a tweet and you can go and see the whole thing. It is Tyler Swift and you would see uh, the different details and the tweets content. And you can see different things, but some of them, they are small. So the, the use of the zoom and you can go and, and through them. It's like, uh, this is an implementation. It is from two Twitter websites. They give us some kind of uh, credentials so we I can use them. So if we, if I click here, but because now is, uh, yeah, you see, this is the Twitter, but uh, because I'm using like my uh, monitor, like uh, this looks a bit ugly. When you click, now there's an open, uh, uh, Twitter is opened using my account, but then it opened in Tyler Soft uh, account and you can go and go through uh, her contents, maybe like it is, because you are reading the data. And for example, there's an artist and people that sometimes, you know, they use it, they use those kind of movement to uh, to, to ride the, 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 the wave or sometimes, sometimes they start it because they believe in. So as you maybe experience the data, you go and click and see what they have been actually doing, you know, so you have a better like uh, understanding of the situation. We can do filtering. Uh, the, we, we see all the community, but we can also only see the Black Lives Matter here or just change it to see the All Lives Matters. And we can also go through them. And also the mixed community. We can go and check the filter. The, the only, if we have, uh, like in a case that we have many tweets, like thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions. So we can just go and see only 10 tweets. And they are the top tweets in terms of, of retweets. You can see the numbers and you can see this is the highest one. And we can uh, even like go and, and, and check and check uh, texts. So if we go and write police here, so those are the tweets that they, uh, they, they contain police word in their uh, and the tweet the uh, the tweet itself contain police for it. We can this is kind of a raw data that we, we thought we thought it, it might make a lot of sense to go through it. And even if the users 
knows what happens through that time of the, of the of the of the movement and uh, things that have been like that change uh, how the movement reacts we can go at a, at the time of that event and see how that changed the thing so we for example like we have now three community and we, if we go to the all lives matters we go to the beginning we will see that people we were just mocking people that they, they support all lives matters because that's mean the hashtag wasn't used by the community that believe all, all lives matter at the beginning people feel bad and they use it just to say bad thing about it but as times goes no those hashtags with all lives matter people such uh, the one they use it is are the ones they are actually behind it and they start talking about things like uh, people get, police get called uh, killed and if we go about police and then we have all the communities you will see the different how different groups react with police uh, the, the one in, in the black life matters that they, they they really see say that or feel that police is not doing good but then the one in all lives matters think the the, the other way and feel that uh, police also as being killed and treated badly so you can see what's different and then you can check the mixed community and go inside and see actually what are those tweets that they use both retweets and it seems that from like reading a bit you would feel that okay both of them they feel bad for the community to be divided but some of them they are just against all lives matters and feel why that is used because it is actually black lives matter in their opinion that the one who are being treated badly and just the main thing is from the tool from different futures filters interactivity you would be able to get a lot of insight and different users will, will get different things and uh, without even the data be, be being heavily processed or like uh, like being uh, bringing insight themselves like the tool itself can can work as a data uh, uh, analysis the conclusion uh, uh static visualization struggle with the uh, with big data using big data and interactive visualization with, with with the two strategies like allow the user to navigate uh, without sacrificing the whole pictures and different tools for different uh, tasks and this is important just not how good the tool is but just how it can done the job or how easy or difficult to be used and yeah interactivity need a better powerful tool finally future work I would like to we would like to automate this tool to accept different data sets because only now it works with data set that it has but that needs like a, a use case and an experienced scientist that they 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 call collaborate to to think of scenarios or filters that they can be used and uh, then it can be automated and and somehow they, the user can just uh upload the data and it can have multiple filters to, to use them with the data and can the, the 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 tool would be able to identify the variables themselves uh, itself